together Strangers, neighbors Our blood is one Children of generations Of every nation Of kingdom come So don't let your heart be
What we're going to do right now is we're going to pray. And we're going to pray for the things that are going on in your world. And, you know, together as one, we're going to pray for you. So what is it that is going on in your world? I love that we can step into 2021 with this confidence of who God is. Let me just read you the scripture real quick. Romans 15, it says this. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And this hope is a great confidence that our God is faithful to his word. So whatever it is that you're facing, whatever it is that you may think 2021 holds, come on, let's commit it. Let's give it to God and look to him. So Jesus, right now, God, we pray. Lord God, as we, as we bring all of these things to you, God, will you step in? Will you do what only you can do, God? We place our hope, our confidence and trust in who you are, God. We thank you for all that you're about to do in and through our lives, God. We commit this year to you, God. We give you all the glory and all the praise, God. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords, God. We worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's continue to worship. And I could sing over and over I love you, it never grows old How could I tell you enough That I love you, I love you, Lord So good to see you all and everybody in Aalborg, Norns, Paris. Uh, good to see you guys and obviously Malmö. I love you guys so much. Uh, and it's so, so fun to be able to be in many places at the same time. Aren't you grateful for technology? Yeah. Uh, I, I know that I am. And, and I just wanted to say to you guys here in Copenhagen that you know, we are so grateful for you. We, we're in Malmö, and I know that you're in Aalborg as well. We're so grateful for you and, and for you, Thomas and Kat, who, who moved across the, all those years ago and building a great church in, here in Copenhagen that has sort of spilled over into different cities in this region. And it's just a cool thing to be a part of. I love that praise report. One house, many rooms. Uh, you know, there's just something great about being a part of something that is, that is bigger than yourself. Yeah. And then, then kind of what you see day to day that we know that we have a church family that, uh, that is making a difference around the place. So, so wh whatever location that you're in, can you just give yourself a big round of applause for being amazing? And uh, you guys can find a seat. And can we, can we also give it up for the, for the creative team up here? Also nice to have Charlene with me from Malmö. You know, it just, just, just brings it, always brings it. I love that. But hey, it is such an honor to, uh, to bring in the word today. And uh, I'm excited. 
I, I have a message that, uh, that I believe is going to help you, that's going to empower you, uh, because I know that it's been so impacting in my life. Uh, and, uh, you know, for those of you in Malmö, I think, you know, I've, I've shared some of these thoughts there, there as well. So if, if you have heard some of this before, I'm just talking to Malmö now, you know, God can speak to you today as well. Uh, and, uh, and I just believe that wherever you are, uh, that God is going to speak to you. Can we pray together? Yeah. Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it is living, it is active, and it has the power to transform our lives. And we pray, Father, as we open your word today and as we unpack it together, that you will speak to us, that you will open our hearts and open our ears to what you have to say to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We are going to open the Bible in Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. And this is a time in Jesus' life uh, where he is about to start his public ministry. So, so Jesus has, hasn't done any uh, miracles yet. He, he, he has been, he's just been baptized. And then he, he's led into the desert where he is fasting for 40 days. That means that he isn't eating for 40 days. Wow. And, and I don't know about you, but I know how hungry I am after four hours. <laughs> can, can you imagine how hungry Jesus must have been after 40 days? You know, and at that point, uh, the devil comes to Jesus to tempt him. And, and, and he starts with this. He says, look at these stones. If you are the son of God, you can tell these stones to become bread. And then Jesus replies to the devil. He says this in verse 4. It is written. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And if you want a title for this message, it is called Bread of Life. Right. Bread of Life. And I've, I've uh, always found it a bit difficult when people ask me the question, what is your favorite food? Do you know that? I'm like, oh, that is, it is... Uh, just give me a second. I need to think about that before, be before I answer. But, but I, I have to be honest and say that it is very difficult to beat bread. <laughs> I, I'm, I just love bread. Do we have any bread lovers in the house? Yeah, do we have any bread lovers in Aalborg and Malmö? Yes, I, I can see you guys. It's, it's great. No, but I, I, actually, I, have, I actually love bread so much that I, I once did something very stupid <laughs> that, that I wanted to tell you about. Is it okay? It's a bit of a confession time yeah. right now. So, so uh, a little while ago, maybe you don't remember it, but we, but, but we did online church when we didn't meet physically. And, and uh, you know, some of you are online as well, and we love you. Uh, and at... at at that time, you know, we were recording some services, and we had gathered the team in Malmö to, to record, and everyone was excited, and, and you know, people had, people had volunteered their time and talent and, and treasure, and they just, just was there to serve. And, you know, and, and, and then I come, and, and I walk into the room, look at all these great people, but then across the room, I spotted something. It was a loaf of beautiful white sourdough that was there to be like a prop, you know, one of those background things in this shot when you're filming. And I was like, man, that looks good. Because, you know, we, we have a guy in Malmö who's, who's, who's really good at baking and he, he, he like it was new, like I could smell it. it, it like it, it was, oh man, I, 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 I'm just getting hungry just talking about it. But I think, I think someone on the team, I'm not gonna mention any names because this was a tempter. Uh, this person I think saw that I had looked at that loaf of bread a little bit too intensely, <laughs> with a little bit too much passion. So, so, so this person comes up to me, looks me in the eye, and says, this is not a joke. Uh, she said, George, you know that if you lick the loaf of bread, no one's going to be able to have anything, and you get to have it, have it all. You get to take it home. <laughs> and I wish that I was as strong as Jesus. I wish that I didn't do what I'm about to tell you that I did. Because I know it's a horrible thing. It's also one of those th things that in hindsight, I'm like, I cannot believe I did that. But I looked at the loaf of bread and I bent down and I licked it. <laughs> and I took it home and, I, and, I, and you know, I could just see all these amazing volunteers who were there, probably also hungry and, and just broken hearts. And I'm like, who, who am I? You know, I'm a horrible person. 
I'm, I'm so sorry to those of you in Malmo who were there. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. But, but, but you know, bread, bread is amazing. And, and, and you know, it's, 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 but I think when, when Jesus was faced with that question, you know, you, you can turn these stones into bread. He knew something that I didn't remember in that particular moment. And, and that is actually that, that, that there was something that was more significant for Jesus in that moment than to feed himself physically. He knew that what we truly need is to be truly alive. You know, what we, what we can gain from eating is great, but what we truly need is actually to come alive on the inside. I think we, we all know this, that we, that we can sometimes feel like we're almost starved on the inside. And, and, and you know, know, know that, we, that we know that actually just physical food is not going to help in this situation. And Jesus is telling us, because, and that, is, like, that, that the reason for that is that man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And, and you know, Jesus lived this out in his life. He, you, you, you can see it throughout the Gospels that he was constantly in connection with the Father. He was constantly under the word of the Father. Actually, every single temptation that the devil put towards him, he responded by quoting the word of God. Jesus knew that if we want to be truly alive, what we need is the word of God. And so what I would love, love for us to unpack today together is actually hearing God, how to hear from God. Because I truly believe, and I've experienced in my own life, that, that when we do that, everything changes. It has the potential to create life in us. And, 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 and then the incredible thing about God is that he doesn't just want to communicate uh, to us, he actually wants to hear from us. So, so we're also going to talk about answering God. So first... We're going to talk about hearing God. Secondly, about answering God. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Are you okay, Olbog, Malmö? We're, we're together in this. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay. Let's go for it then. Hearing God. You know, I, I don't think it is something that we should take lightly. That the God who created the heavens and the earth actually wants to have a relationship with us. It, it actually, actually blows our mind. And, and, and there's two things that I, so, I would like to unpack uh, about hearing God. And the first thing is that God's word creates life. God's word creates life. And, and, and you know, we, we can see this at the beginning of, of, of our Bible. We can see it in the creation story that when that, that when God wanted to create the universe, he actually spoke the universe into existence. You know, we read that God said, let there be light, and there was light. There is, there is such powerful creative force in God's word. We live on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Because, and, I, and I think we know that words create because I, I don't know if you have been in a relationship or a situation or, a, or, or, or just a conversation where there are words of life spoken into you. You're encouraged, you're, you're uplifted. Someone speaks into your potential. You know, the Bible tells us that the power of life and death is in the tongue. So, so you can almost feel like there is life growing on the inside of you. But I think we've also been in situations where there's been words of death spoken over us. Maybe someone has, has, has tried to push you down or spoken something over you that is negative or maybe put a label on you. And you can sort of feel like something that was growing on the inside of you is actually being pushed down. But can I just encourage you today that God's word, it is more powerful. It is more significant yeah. than any word that any human being has ever spoken yeah. over you. In God's word, it creates life. So I just want to encourage you that if you, for whatever reason, ha like hear words, either from out outside of yourself or from within yourself, that tries to push you down, that tries to put shame on you, that tries to get you to actually draw back, can, can I tell you that that is not the word of God? 
God's word, it creates life. He wants to lift you. He wants to encourage you. He, he wants you to grow into the person that he has called you to be. It, it doesn't mean that, that what God's word won't hurt or like be like, oh, that, that was a little bit painful to hear, but God's word is never there to put shame on you. God's word is there to lift you and create life in you. Hebrews chapter 4 tells us that it is his word is living, active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It can pierce through anything that anyone has ever told you. Romans 10 tells us about that, that it is the word of God that produces faith in our life. And then I wanted to read this to you in John chapter 1 and verse 14. It says this, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Okay, so, so this is mind-blowing. The word of God became flesh. So, so when Jesus came into the earth, he is the word that was there at the very beginning when the earth was created and he came down to us. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1 to 3, it says, In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. We live on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And when Jesus was here, he was, he was the word of God in, in flesh. He was walking around and speaking the word of God. And, you know, I, I could mention so many things that Jesus said, but I wanted to highlight one thing. And it's a message that I, I believe is for you. And one of the things that Jesus came into the most trouble for was that he looked at people and he told them, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. And I just wanted to encourage you, wherever there is where, the, where there is, is, is shame or, or guilt or any, anything in your, in your life right now, let those words set you free. Let, let those words create life in you because that is what Jesus wants for you. You are forgiven. Because when, when we get under the word of God, when we let Jesus speak into our lives, we are set free. We have life and life to the full. It, it creates godly things in us. And I just want to encourage you. That no matter what anyone has told you, God's word, it creates life in it. He can, he can speak, speak through it and, and, and he can lift you from it. So the first thing is that God's word creates life. And then the second thing that I would like to unpack is that God's word initiates conversation. God's word initiates conversation. You know, we can, we can th see throughout the Word of God, throughout the Bible, uh, that God, he actually, he actually talks about himself as our Father, our Father, and we are his children. You know, it's such a beautiful, beautiful picture of the relationship that, that God actually wants from us. Uh, but, but to be honest, when, when I was starting my Christian journey, when I was starting to become serious about following God for myself, I, I had sort of misunderstood that relationship part. I, I sort of thought that, okay, I, I need to do certain things in order for God to approve of me. So, you know, when I, when I read the Bible, I was like, I'm, I'm reading the Bible, I'm ticking the boxes, I'm hoping that God is happy with me. You know, and, and the more that I read, the more that I, that I kind of studied, the, I, it actually made me feel more guilty, which, which was such a strange thing for me, because I was like, what, what is going on here? But one thing that I realized is that God isn't after productivity, God is after intimacy. Yeah. God, God doesn't want for us to tick religious boxes, that is not what it is about. God actually wants to have a conversation with us. Yeah. He wants to be in community with us. And when I realized that, everything changed for me. When it came to also how I read my Bible. So let's, 
I, I actually wanted to just get, become very, very practical for a second. Is that okay? Yeah. Just talking about how can you engage with the Word of God, the Bible, in a way where, where, where you see it as a conversation, where you see it as God speaking to me, where it's about intimacy and not productivity, not about taking religious boxes, but actually letting the Word of God create life in you. So I have three little practical tips uh, for you that I hope is going to help. And the first thing is to set a time and a place. Right. Set a time and a place. Um, like any relationship, it actually needs to be, be, uh, be prioritized. Uh, you know, you know that, that, that you need actually to, to be there together in order for, for God to speak to you. Because some, sometimes I, th I think it, it can be about, you know, we, we want to know things about God, but actually what we truly need is to know God. And, and just like, like now, I'm, I'm actually getting married in three weeks, which, which is pretty amazing to the incredible Evelina, who's there in Malmo. And, and, and you know, we, we are, we are uh, you know, approaching marriage now. And, you know, the, my goal is not, is not to just know things about her. I'm, it's not like when, I'm, when, 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 when Pastor Thomas is going to be there and we're going to have the wedding ceremony. It's not like I'm going to be handed a test to say, okay, what, what, what are the things, you know, what is her favorite color? Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe that's going to happen. It's probably going to happen now. <laughs> but, but the goal is not to pass the test. The goal is actually to know her. And, 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 and you know, but, but, but actually that, that doesn't exclude the fact that I, I also will know things about her. You know, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't mean that we don't need to spend any time together. <laughs> You know, it, because a relationship requires that we sit down and we talk and we get to know one another. And so I would encourage you to actually find a time and a place every day where you have that conversation right. with God, where you get the word of God into you. And, 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 and something that has helped me a lot is, is, a, is, a, is a concept called habit stacking. I don't know if you've ever heard that, but, but you know, whenever you want to start a new habit in your life, uh, very smart people have, have, have told us that one of the great ways to do that is actually to, to kind of uh, connect it with a habit that you already have in place. So, for example, I drink coffee every morning. It, it, it is like when, when I wake up, that, that is what I think about. <laughs> it, 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 is, it is that cup of coffee. Uh, it, it's, it just never grows old. I just, I just love it every single day. And, 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 I also know, and, and I also know that, you know, if I don't have a coffee by, I, th I think I've ca calculated it's one o'clock in the afternoon, then I'm going to get a headache. And so it's, it's not good. It's not good. I, I, I know I, I have issues. But it happens for me every single day. Uh, so what, what I have decided is that every morning when I drink my coffee, I'm going to read my Bible. Uh, because, because then I'm already there. And, and, and I'm ready to go for it. So I would encourage you to think about, if you want to start this new habit, or maybe, maybe you want to kind of get it a bit, a bit more consistent in your life, to think about, is, it, is there something uh, that I do every single day that I enjoy, that I can actually connect Bible reading with? You know, maybe it is your walk to work. Maybe it is, you know, when, when you get to bed. You know, you know you're going to get to bed every day, and you know that you love it. So, 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 so maybe you can just put, put your Bible on your pillow and just, okay, every, every day when I get to bed, I'm going to read the Word. But whatever it is that you do, I would just encourage you to, to, to find a time and place. And then the second practical tip is to decide what to read. Decide in advance what to read. Because I don't know about you, but when I wake up in the morning, uh, if, if I don't know exactly what I am going to read, I'm, very, I'm too tired to make any decisions. You know, I can't even make a decision about where to open my Bible. So it's not going to happen if I haven't decided already that that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so, so I would encourage you to, to figure out a way to, to, to decide what I'm going to read. You, you, you can use... Uh, uh, a Bible reading plan on the YouVersion app, you know, all phones, you, you, you can download that and, and there's great plans there. Or you can take a book of the Bible and just do one chapter a day or, or whatever that you do. But I, I have a journal and I, and I write down what, what I read and then I know, okay, today I'm just picking up from where I 
left off yesterday. And actually, one thing that I do, just, just to help me a lot, is that, is that before I go to bed, I put my Bible out, I open it to where I want to start reading, because then, then I actually know that when I get up, get my cup of coffee, I just have to sit down and look down. <laughs> I'm just helping you guys, I'm just helping. I'm just, it's, it's, just, it's helped me. Why make things harder than they have to be? That's, that's, uh, that's what I would say. But then, then the third and final thing, just a practical tip, is to read deeply. Read deeply. Um, and, and this was also something that I, I sort of learned in that, in the, in that journey when I, when I was starting to, okay, God, God actually wants to have a relationship with me. He doesn't want me to tick these religious boxes. Because I had read so, like, I was trying to read a lot every day, and, and, you know, I didn't really get so much out of each pa passage. So what, what I decided, and, and this might help you, is, is just to actually limit myself in terms of how broad I deep, or how, how broad I read, and actually dig into the depth of what I read. So, so, so I would encourage you to, to, to think about how can I... I, I think about what I'm reading, not just skim through it. It's not, it's not like you're reading a scientific paper where you, do the, where, you, where you only read the abstract or you read the introduction and the, and the conclusion, and then you think, ah, oh, I kind of got what, what this was about. No, you, you, you actually want God to speak to you. And, 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 and you know, there's different ways that you can do that, and, and I think one, one of the main things is just, just that you actually think about what you read. And one, one uh, one uh, structure or way of doing it that has helped me a lot in terms of thinking about it, meditating on it, uh, and letting God speak to me is, is something called soap. Soap. And some of you might have heard about this before, but I would like to encourage you again about this, if you, even if you've heard it, because this has been so helpful for me. Right. So every, every single day when I read my Bible, uh, I, I, I write an S at the top of my page. An S stands for Scripture. Can everybody say scripture? scripture. So I, I read one chapter a day. So I pick one verse from the chapter that I've read and I write it down word for word. Because, okay, that's, that's kind of the way I'm focusing in on this morning. So that's, that's scripture. So one, 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 one verse that kind of stood out to you. And then the second letter is O and that stands for observation. Can you say observation? observation. So I write an O on my page. And then I just ask the question, what is actually happening here? Because I don't know if you do this, but sometimes I read and by the end of, by the end of the chapter, I've already forgotten what happened at the beginning. So actually stopping and kind of looking what actually took place. What, 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 do, what do you think they were feeling? Who was saying what? What was going on? And, and just write some observations about what, what you see in the passage that you've read. And, and then the third letter is A. Can everybody say application? application, and this is where you ask the question, how does what I read, how does it relate to me? How can I apply this in my life? And, and just, just think about it. what how is one, one way that I can apply this to me? And then the last uh, letter is P. Can everybody say prayer? prayer. And this is where I, I, I just, at the bottom, I, I, I take, take an opportunity to actually just write a prayer based on kind of what, what I've read, what I felt like God is speaking to me, and I'm just trying to, to, to write a prayer. And, and then you can also pray about anything that you would like. And I've learned this from Pastor Thomas, that one, one of the best prayers that you can read, uh, pray sometimes is just to write at the bottom of that page, help. You know, I, I, I think I did that, I did that yesterday, and, and uh, I needed it. So it, it, was, it was great. So, so that's soap. And I, and I would just encourage you to, to not skim over the Word of God. Not make it about taking a religious box, but actually read to have God speaking to you. And then the second thing that I would like to unpack with you guys today is answering God. Because it is a beautiful, beautiful thing that God wants to speak to us. But how incredible that he wants, uh, wants to hear from us. Uh, you know, my my uh, sister, she has, she has a son. Uh, named Otto. Otto, Otto. He, he is two and a half years old, and he is, he is a great little guy. Uh, and uh, I, I, I was able to go to Norway uh, this, this uh, summer to go and visit them, and, and you know, it's been six months since I've seen him, and so it's really cool to kind of see the growth that has happened in his life in these six months. Uh, you know, kids are, like, they grow, grow like crazy. 
And especially when you don't see them up close every day, you know, like, wow, what, what is happening here? And one of the cool things about Otto right now is he is starting to speak. So he's starting to say things. And I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. He calls me Uncle George. And it, oh, it just, just warms my heart every time he says it, you know. And then, and then he talks about himself a lot. He talks about himself in third person. He says, Otto this and Otto that. And I'm like, that's, that's great. That's great. You're all about yourself, but that's okay. <laughs> And, and, and then he says, no, like he, he, he starts to have, have these words that he's starting to use. And, and, and you know, I, I can see that he's very proud. You know, he's very proud of his ability in speaking. You know, and, and, you know, I applaud him and I cheer him on, of course. But, but the reality is that, that uh, he has had his mom and dad and his whole family speaking words into him for two and a half years. And it's only now that he is waking up to the fact that he is able to answer them. You know, because all, all speech, it is actually answering speech. Because we have first been spoken into before we can speak. And actually what is happening with us right now, when we are waking up to the fact that we, we can actually answer God, uh, is the fact that, that, that God has actually been speaking to us for a, for a long, long time. Uh, you know, he's been speaking to us since we were born. And, and, you know, as we actually get into the word, we learn how he thinks. We learn how he speaks. We learn his vocabulary. And, and, and we, are, we are kind of drawn into responding to him. And, you know, the Bible word for this is, is, is prayer, as, you, as, as many of you would know. And, and I just wanted to give you two observations here as well about, about prayer that I think is, is going to be helpful. And the first thing is that God made the first move. God made the first move. And, and, and why is this so significant? I, I believe it is crucial that we understand this. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes I can feel like I'm bothering God. I'm like, I'm not sure if I can come to God like this. So I'm not sure if he, he cares about this aspect. Or may, maybe I feel like I've kind of grown distant or done something. And now I'm not sure if God wants to hear from me. But can I tell you? that long before we did anything for God, he gave everything for us. You know, the Bible tells us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, he has come all the way to us. So whatever we have to say, whatever we want to bring before God, he is actually there ready to listen. We don't have to make our way to God. He has made his way to us. And the only thing that we need to do is actually to open our mouths because God is all, he, he, is, he is there. He is there ready to hear from us. Tim, Timothy Keller, uh, he says it like this, that prayer is continuing a conversation that God has started through his word and his grace, which eventually becomes a full encounter with him. That we are stepping into a conversation that he already started. And in that, we don't just get to know about him, we actually get to encounter him. And, and you know, it's, it's such a beautiful thing. And, and the second, second part of this uh, is that God hears your heart. God hears your heart. There's a story in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in the New Testament where, that Jesus is telling, and it's a story about two people that walk up to the temple to pray. So there is a tax collector uh, who, who was despised by people of the day. He, he, people were looking down upon him, and he, 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 people saw him as a traitor. He was a sinner. And then there was a Pharisee, a religious person, who people looked up to, uh, and who, who, who did all these great things. And they both go up to the temple. And we can read that Jesus tells the story that the Pharisee looks to heaven, and he says, thank you that I am not like this tax collector over here. Thank you that I'm able to do all these things. Thank you that I'm doing so great. Thank you. And it's like, it's just building himself up. And then you have this tax collector that looks up to heaven and says, God, have mercy on me. And in that moment, Jesus says that it was the tax collector who went home righteous. Because God actually don't, he, he doesn't look at all prayer as equal. He doesn't. God is not impressed when we try to impress him. 
God is not impressed when we try to make ourselves look good or, 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 or put, put on a show before him. God actually wants to hear your heart. He wants to hear your heart. In Psalms chapter 139 and verse 1 to 5, I love these verses. It says, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. That is how God looks at us. And as he knows everything. He sees you. He knows you. And still he loves you. Still he cares about you. But I don't know if it's, maybe it's just me, but I feel like, I, I feel like there's things in my life that I want to hide from God. I feel like there's things that might not be appropriate to share with God. And, you know, when I read the Psalms, to be honest, you know, this book of prayers in the Bible, there are certain things in that book that I feel like this should maybe be edited out. I feel like it's a little bit disrespectful towards God. I feel like it's a little bit too angry. I feel like it's a little bit too hateful. I feel like it's, it, it's, it's, it maybe it just shouldn't be there. But actually what the book of Psalms show us is that God is not after just kind of us putting on a show. He wants us, all of us. Eugene Peterson, he, he says this, that... Prayer is language used in relation to God. It gives utterance to what we sense or want or respond to before God. God speaks to us. Our answers are our prayers. The answers are not always articulate. Silence, sighs, groaning. These also constitute responses. The answers are not always positive. Anger, skepticism, curses. These are also responses. But, God, but always God is involved, whether in darkness or light, whether in faith or despair. You know, I want to encourage you. Bring your heart before God. Because that, that is where we belong. That, that, that is where we need to be. That, you know, don't, like, hate actually it shouldn't be suppressed. It should be prayed. Anger shouldn't be suppressed, it should be prayed. Depression shouldn't be depressed, it should be prayed. Anxiety shouldn't be suppressed, it should be prayed. Because prayer brings us to the feet of Jesus. And no matter what we're going through, no matter what is happening in our life, no matter what we need, it is actually by the feet of Jesus, by every word that's spoken from the mouth of God, that is where we find what we need. And God is not put off by you. He is not scared by you. He sees you. And he loves you. We can pray our whole selves to him. Answer with all of us to him. You know, a little bit later in the, in the book of Matthew, or in the book of John, or in, Jesus is... Jesus has, has done a miracle. He's, he's uh, fed the 5,000. Uh, some of you might have heard about that story before. Uh, and, and, you know, we get excited about that story. And I, and I tell you, the people that were there when Jesus fed 5,000 with bread and with fish, because everybody loves bread, you know, they, they loved it. They absolutely loved it. They loved it so much more, like so much that when they realized the next day that Jesus had left them, they were like, we need to find Jesus because we are hungry again. <laughs> you know, we want bread. <laughs> so, so they go, go and they find Jesus and they, and they ask him to perform the miracle again. They're like, we're hungry. We're hungry. And then Jesus says this in John chapter 6 and verse 35. Jesus declared, I am the bread of of life and whoever comes to me will never go hungry and whoever believes in me will never be 
thirsty. Because there is something that we need more than just physical existence. It is something that we need more than just to satisfy our earthly desires. We actually need the Word of God. And the Word of God became flesh and made His dwelling among us. And today, we are standing here and the bread of life is here. The bread of life is here. And anyone who takes in Jesus will never go hungry. And whoever believes in Him will never be thirsty. And it's obviously not talking about physical hunger Something much deeper than that. Yeah. Something much deeper than that. And, and, and you know, I, I need to do this every single day. I know that. I know I need him every single day. Every single day. More now than ever before in my life, if I'm to be honest. And I want us to take an opportunity right here in Copenhagen, Aalborg, and in Malmö to take, give an opportunity to those of you who haven't yet had an encounter with Jesus for the first time. Or maybe today you realize, you know, I've actually become distant. I've walked away from God, but today I realize that I want to come back to Him. Can I remind you, God made the first move. That He is here. He has made His way to you. He died for you on that cross long before you could do anything for Him. So it so, so what, what, what your past says or what people say about you or what your, what your voice in your head tells you, it doesn't matter. What matters is that Jesus loves you. And he says that I am the bread of life. I am here for you to encounter me. And I just want to give everyone an opportunity to respond to that. And can I just get everybody to close your eyes and bow your heads just to give you a moment of privacy. And if that is you, that you want to connect your life to Jesus. If, if, you want to, if, if you want to take in this bread of life. You know, you, you might never have heard anyone talk about Jesus in a way like this before. And, and, uh, and today you realize that I want that. I want that. Or as I said, you might have walked with Jesus before, but today you want to come back to him. When I, when I count to three, I just wanted to raise your hand high enough and long enough so that I can see it. But you're not really raising it for me. You're right, raising it to Jesus. It's just a sign to say, Jesus, I need you. I want you. So one, God loves you. He cares for you. And he has, to, has a plan for your life. Two, he has made the way. He has made his way to you. He has been speaking to you. He has been approaching you. And now the only thing that we need to do is to answer him and to accept what he has done for us. So three, just raise your hand if you want to do that today both here in Copenhagen, in Aalborg, and in Malmö, just raise it high, because you're not raising it to me, you're raising it to Jesus. Lots of people here raising their hands. Beautiful, beautiful. Anybody else? Anybody else want to do that today? Also in Aalborg, Malmö, just lift it high. Amazing. You can take your hands down. We're going to pray a prayer, and this is a prayer answering God. We're answering what He has done for us. We are answering the revelation that He actually gave His life for us. We are answering His call to us that He wants to give us life and life to the full. So I'm going to pray first and then you pray after me. And we're going to pray this together as a church family. Say, Jesus, I thank you that you made your way to me. Thank you that you died for me on that cross so that I would have forgiveness for my sins. I thank you that I have a future and a hope in you. Help me to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Can we give those people a massive round of applause? Across our locations, absolutely incredible. You know, we, we just want to say a massive congratulations to you. Uh, and, you know, this is the, the best decision that you can ever make. Uh, and, you know, this is the first step of walking out this relationship with God. And, and, and we would love to come alongside you and see if there's any way that we can help you. So I'm going to get Pastor Thomas up here right now to 
to explain a gift that we have for you. But can we give those people one more massive round of applause? Hey, can we thank George as well for that message? So good. I don't know about you, but I just love practical messages. You know, just something where you're just like, man, that, that helps. You know, that's a really helpful message just in your daily walk with Jesus. And we've said it before, you know, on Sundays we preach to people's Mondays. And um, part of that means that you'll never leave a church service at Hillsong where we hope You'll never leave a church service in Hillsong where you're like, man, I didn't understand a word of that. But hopefully we leave so many services going, man, that really challenged something inside of me. And I just want to encourage everyone just to really go through those notes and listen to this again when it becomes available online next week. And, you know, go, how can I do this in my life? How can I apply this to, you know, the soap structure? And it's awesome. I just, I'm just picturing you in the morning. Sorry, I just picture you in the morning, like coffee in one hand, licking a bread in the other hand. Just wandering out to your Bible, slam. <laughs> so good. But hey, if you lifted your hand before and, you know, committing your life to Jesus, connecting your life to Jesus, man, what an amazing decision you have made today. And we would love to come alongside you and just help you and encourage you in this decision. So on the way out, we have some of our amazing team with these Bible pickup signs, whether it's in the auditorium, whatever. Um, room you're in right now and location even in our foyers we've got our next lounges where you can enjoy a a drink or something with our team and just say hi but we'd love to give you a bible just a new testament bible we have an english danish and swedish version and uh, can i encourage you just to grab it on the way out or if a friend brought you just grab one for your friend and, and give it to them as a memory of today even if you have a bible at home grab this as a memory of today to remind you of the decision you made today and then already this week, already tomorrow, start, you know, this soap devotion. Tomorrow, just, you know, look it up and just start to read. Okay, a scripture, an observation, application, a prayer. Help! And let's really believe that God is going to speak to you. And then I want to encourage you just to keep coming back. You know, just make a decision. I'm going to be in church. There's something about the presence of God when we're in it that just draws worship out of us, that draws us into the presence of God. And I want to just encourage you, make a decision. I'm going to be in church and plenty of options. As of next week here in Copenhagen, 10.30, 1 o'clock, and 6 o'clock. So plenty of options to choose from. And um, you make that decision for your life. So come on, can we give a, another hand for all those people? So good.